And so they go to Peter's mother-in-law house. And what happens? Well, they tell Jesus that, hey, she's sick. She has a fever. She's not doing well right now. And so he goes to her. We don't hear a word from her. We don't know how sick she really is. We just know that she has a fever. But Jesus goes to her. And after he goes to her, she's made well. And what does she do? She gets up. And she doesn't think of herself. Instead, she gets up and she starts to serve others. She puts action in, and does things to help others right after she starts feeling well. So Jesus is busy healing the wounds of people. He's healing people in all sorts of different ways. And we know that God talked in the psalm about healing our wounds. And we know that there's so many different types of wounds in the world. Yes, we have our physical wounds, and some of us still have scars to prove it, you know, especially if you had an injury. If you had surgery, you know, you have some type of scar. But there's other kinds of scars, too. There's not just the physical wounds that we need healing from. We have emotional wounds. We have spiritual wounds. We have mental wounds. And all of these need to be healed so that we can be made whole. And Jesus is the one who can help heal us and make us whole. I kind of think of Jesus as the super glue, the super glue that puts everything back together and makes us stronger and makes us whole. It's one of those things that Jesus did all different types of healing, but it wasn't just the healing that he did for people. He helped them believe again, believe in their faith. And it, usually it was because they had faith that they were made well. But Jesus didn't just stay in Capernaum, even though that was his kind of like home base for those three years of his ministry. After doing all this and, and doing it most of the night, in the early morning, what did he have to do? He went away by himself so he could pray. In a sense, he needed to recharge his batteries. He needed to be in connection with God. He needed to pray. And then when the disciples that were with him found him, because they went out and they looked for him, they said, you know, there's more people here that need healing. And you think, okay, I'll just stay here and do that. But Jesus' message wasn't just for the people in Capernaum. It was for all the world. And so Jesus started saying, no, we need to go to all the other villages. And so they went all the way around Galilee, around the Sea of Galilee. And they started taking that message, that message of love, compassion, grace, mercy, hope. And he started to heal other people. And of course, the word spread. So how do we live out our lives today and be healed by Jesus if we don't have faith, if we don't reach out to God, if we don't say, God, I am broken, I need healing. What can we do to open ourselves up? Some questions to think about, questions to ponder. And I started thinking about this and I started thinking about, you know, sometimes we don't even have to say anything because God knows our heart. God knows our heart and knows when we need help, when we're struggling, when we are tired, when we have pain, when we're grieving. God sees us and knows us. And sometimes we can be healed immediately and sometimes it takes some time to do that. And there are other times when God sends somebody else to reach out. Yes, we have doctors, we have nurses, we have all these people that have been working so hard during this pandemic to try and help heal people. We have scientists working, constantly creating new vaccines, especially as we get more and more strains coming around of this COVID. There's so many people working and we have people out there vaccinating folks, trying to help get the word out trying to help us so that we can be protected from this pandemic. And then there's others that are providing the food for us, providing a chance for us to have free food, whether it be the pantries, and there's others that are working in the stores. We need to thank all these essential personnel. We need to thank all of them because they are trying to give us whatever normalcy we can have during this time because all of our lives have changed during this pandemic. 
So when we begin to think about this, and we can celebrate not only the small and large acts of service of others that we find um, in this world, we can be encouraged that God is looking out for us. And there are different ways that we can serve others. There's a way, if, if you think about it, I want you to think going back to that psalm of how God was encouraging those that were in exile. And we heard that song, we wait, we hope, we stay. But they were hopeful because they saw that God was going to rebuild, rebuild Jerusalem, rebuild the Holy Land. And they'd be able to go back and they would be able to worship again in their temples. And so I want to ask these questions of you. To, I want you to start thinking about this. And I got this from another author. And here are some of the questions that uh, they put forward. They said, what is the equivalent of God building Jerusalem up today? What is the equivalent of God building up our community today? Where do we see that? And who are the people that are marginalized that God is embracing and bringing as the Israel of today? Who are the ones who feel exiled and alone? Who are they that God is reaching out and wanting to give them hope and love and compassion and encouragement? And how is it for our faith community? How is our faith community meant to function as a holy city, as a holy community that shines as a beacon to the larger world of God's people? How do we do that in our own community, in our own faith community? As the body of Christ, how do we let our light shine and reach out to others? And where do we see God's presence in our community, which offers the hospitality to the stranger or assistance to the needy? We, we hear about it. We've talked about all the things that we do. We talked about our food pantry. We've talked about this connected community ministries known as Sikkim that do so many things. There's also the rescue mission. There's so many different things out there that are reaching to our community to offer hospitality to those that are in need. And then what do we need? What do we need to be healed and made whole so that we too can follow Christ and reach out to others with God's love, compassion, mercy, and forgiveness? Many of us may be broken in one way or another, or maybe you're completely healed and you are completely whole, and thank God for that. But what is holding you back from, one, opening yourself up to God's love and forgiveness, to Jesus reaching out with his hand and, his, and saying, you are well, and then taking your hand and saying, please come follow me. The harvest is plentiful, but the labors are few. There is so much work that needs to be done in this world. Can you, will you follow me? Will you be one who will be a fisher for people? Will you be one who will reach out and be the light that I give you and be that love that I give you and share that good news with others? Will you be one of those who can help heal someone else so that they can be made whole. We are treasured and loved by God. Let's help share that goodness with others. Amen.